So this is the Milton Industries 580E kit. It's made in the USA with US and global components. Uh, you get the fittings, the batteries, everything you need to use it right out of the box. It's a one year warranty. Comes with the typical ball foot, the dual head, the dual head straight, and it comes with the easy on that has the little locking mechanism that clamps onto a valve stem. Uh, then it comes with a really heavy duty tail. The instructions say to put the tail onto the inflator with no Teflon tape. And there is no O-ring on this either. I'll just show you what this fitting looks like and that there is no there's no o-ring on that which i'm a little confused about it seems to me like that's the type of fitting that has an o-ring it just threads onto this end this end is just flat it's not uh it's not beveled or contoured so anyway i'm following the instructions with what i what they gave me in the box i'm threading this on with no teflon tape I'm just going to snug it up with a half inch wrench, just like that. I'm not going to go crazy on that, over torquing it and wrecking anything. On this end, they say, yes, put Teflon tape on this fitting. So I did that. The accuracy of this gauge is certified to be accurate to 0.05%. And then these are the pressure ranges, 0.1 to 160 PSI under normal working conditions. Well, what do they mean by that? Specify the working temperature range as 32 to 120 Fahrenheit, zero to 50 Celsius. The display is of the e-ink type. Inflator takes two AAA batteries that are included, which are installed into the inflator here. The cap does not come with it. I put that cap on there. The battery screw is recessed into what seems like relatively delicate plastic fins that are threaded on the outside like a tire valve stem for the purposes of holding the valve stem cap while you fill the tire. But these little fins also prevent the use of a regular number two screwdriver. You can't get that in there without pushing those apart and risking breaking them off. Um, so that's a number one Phillips. Um, number one Phillips works okay on that. And then I just want to show you inside there that they do have a threaded metal insert here. So it's not just a cheap screw threading into plastic, which would for sure wear out although it is kind of fussy and difficult to get that on there. And once again, I find that the Japanese industrial standard cross type bit is the more perfect fit for that screw. Just one more example of running into a screw that fits better with Japanese cross type than it does with American Phillips. Because of the delicacy of these fans, I'm going to put a cap on here and leave it on here. Why do I have carbon choke cleaner, brake cleaner, and acetone? In the manual, under the heading maintenance and storage, they warn against the use of abrasives or solvent cleaners to clean this when it gets dirty. Those are probably going to turn this display cloudy and may ruin it, make it unreadable. So be warned and be careful about getting solvents on this display. I got to thinking about how to protect this screen. I have this old OtterBox screen protector that I never used. Okay. So this is the, keeping the orientation. This side peels off and goes on there. It worked the bubble to the edge. Perfect. Okay, 
there. Now I got screen protector installed. They also warn about extremes of heat and cold damaging the e-ink. Even when the inflator is off, the display shows the Milton logo. That's normal. They even explain that in the manual. It's not using any draw on the battery to display the Milton logo. It's just a characteristic of e-ink. You can have a power off image on e-ink. It takes at least two PSI to start it up. And if for some reason that's not good enough for your workflow, there's a power button. The e-ink display auto rotates with an accelerometer but I find it a little bit hit and miss. And why isn't it automatically rotating down for me? Why is the screen not showing? <laughs> okay, that's a little annoying. I want the screen right side up. Come on. I don't particularly like the auto rotation. I just want the display to lock and I can do that by holding the LED light button down for three seconds and it locks it. Holding it down for three seconds again unlocks it. It does remember my setting the next time I use the inflator, uh, but not if I take the batteries out. Power off happens after 60 seconds of idle time, which I confirmed with a stopwatch. When you're filling, the e-ink display shows zero, but does show actual pressure when using the deflation button here. All right, so I'm checking my tire pressure. I am showing 35, 35, 35, 36. So let's get them all up to Actually, I'm going to go 38. I'm going to put them all at 38. So let's see. I don't, I don't get automatic power on just by hitting the trigger. Okay, it went to PSI. Um, what I'm going to do for the sake of the camera is I'm going to turn the rotate lock off and hope that it rotates so that it looks correct on the camera. Just like that, and we're gonna go. So it goes to zero as you fill, which is what the instructions say it will do. Okay, 38.02. So satisfying. Okay, so I was just ripping on how dim the LED was, and then I was trying to figure out what the PSI on my Kubota tire is, and I couldn't read it. So here I am using the LED to try to find the PSI reading on here. What about low pressure? How does this work on figuring out low pressures? I don't even know what's in here. Ten. Ten. I'm gonna I'm gonna bump it to actually I'm gonna leave it right at ten. I'm gonna go ten PSI. Ooh, yeah, I thought this one was a little mushy. So this one's three PSI different than my other one. All right, Let's see here, I'm gonna go down to 12 leave it a little mushy it's a little easier on the back you know let's go down to 10 let's go to 10 and a half 
since I can actually measure ten and a half. Isn't it a little easier on the transmissions to have tires that are more exactly matched? Because then the differentials, when you're driving in a straight line, the differentials don't have to do anything. Look at that. I didn't even realize these were almost two pounds different from each other. They're not two pounds different from each other anymore. Did I let that much air out while I was doing the readings? Well, yeah, I did. Okay, so that reading was accurate. So now I know that I'm at 40 PSI. And the gauge, so the gauge shows a little over 40 little over 40 and this one this one's way off okay so what's the actual so tire pressure can be a really fussy thing It'll be kind of interesting to see if this increased accuracy uh, makes any noticeable differences when I'm experimenting with different tire pressures on my Chevy Volt electric car. We'll see how this holds up. Uh, the e-ink I'm a little concerned about in Minnesota winters when it's 20 and 30 below zero. Fortunately, I've got a fairly warm garage to put my vehicles in. So the price on this is pretty expensive the kit that i have here is the full top of the line kit and that was close to 300 dollars after tax and shipping they have other chuck options at a price point around 250 dollars that's still a lot of money for an inflator i've i've never seen an inflator anywhere on the market like this it's expensive um you know on, on, on the off chance that my wife is watching this video, I just want to say I love you and uh, thank you for this awesome birthday gift. Um, now you know what you got me. I do really like the accuracy of this. I really do actually.